Anderson Lowe is a Chief Technology Leader at ARB. He'll be speaking about future transport systems at the upcoming International Driverless Vehicle Summit in Sydney from October 27 to 29. Dixon, what are the advantages to autonomous platooning? Well, uh, Guy, in terms of autonomous um, or your platooning or automated platooning, it brings forth the latest technology that's available in a lot of the trucks and also the automotive uh, perspective. Uh, with platooning, it's, it's really, you know, a lot of the vehicles these days have already have some kind of platooning opportunity. It's just that with platooning, uh, what it is is utilizing the uh, adaptive cruise control that you have, but also have a communicative uh, component to it where the front vehicle, when there's any acceleration, deceleration, it, con it instantly talks to the slave vehicle or the vehicle just behind. So rather than using radar and lidars and what have you, um, to, to, to preempt the, the necessary uh, action, you actually communicate it instantaneously. So there is that safety elements towards it. It sounds very advanced. How advanced is platooning at the moment? Well, it's interesting. Australia is probably still in its in our infancy, uh, whereas in, in other countries such as in, in Europe, uh, many of the countries within the uh, Europe uh, continent as well as in America, they are utilizing that uh, platooning to have efficiency uh, across their uh, truck fleets or freight uh, logistic fleet. In Australia, as many people would know, we have your B-doubles, triple Bs and what have you. So in a way, they are your mechanical, um, um, what do you call, platooning. Uh, it's just that we're moving towards technology where this platooning is um, connected wirelessly from that perspective. What will people learn about platooning when they when they come to the International Drivers of Vehicle Summit? Well, it's interesting. It's just like uh, the paper that um, recently ARP has, has produced about the horse and carriage, right? In the eight, early 1800s, you know, you have your horse and carriage, uh, and then within 18 years or 20 years, uh, there's a flip towards you know, your automotive uh, or, or automobiles uh, across, whether it be in, in, uh, you know, in the US, such as uh, Manhattan, where your horse and carriage, you're looking at your, your how to clean out the poop, how you, how you water your horses, to now how do you lay down your infrastructure. So with platooning, is very similar as well. As the technology progresses, people will learn what is necessary to enable the, the technology to be much better and much more available or freer uh, to be available for the general uh, freight and logistics, uh, um, what do you call, industry. When do, you, when do you estimate that will be? When do you think platooning would become commonplace? Well, it's actually a very interesting uh, question again, Guy. Um, I guess, you know, because Australia has got such a uh, longer history in terms of so-called platooning, and I mentioned the, the, the mechanical platooning, um, it will be some time, um, I, I believe, for the technology to uptake. But once it uptake, you see the uh, benefits of the safety perspective, you know, the, the lesser downtime, uh, and it's integrated with other technology. And that's the important point. Now, we are not looking, focusing just solely on platooning, but all the arrays of features that goes with that such technology, such as fatigue monitoring, driver monitoring, telematics, where you increase the safety awareness and increase you know, how, how uh, trucks or, or the uh, heavy vehicles are being, um, what they call, transported and the goods are being transported from point A to point B across Australia, which is a large landscape um, in comparison to some of the other countries. If you're a potential delegate and you want to go to IDBS4, what are the advantages do you think of attending? Well, the advantages are multifaceted. I mean, you're not only looking at the latest technology, seeing and actually touching some of the latest demonstration of the technology, you're actually up close and personal, talking to the people, talking to the suppliers of the technology, talking to the technicians, the engineers about what is available and what is becoming available in the next three years, two years, and immediately. I mean, um, one of my understanding is that you know, there's going to be some OEMs there that were showcasing some of the available cars right now today where you can drive, you know, feel the automation in your hands, or not in your hands, so to speak, because the car is driving itself. We're looking forward to your session. What sessions are you looking forward to seeing? Well, there's so many different sessions that, that, that over the two days that we have at ADBS4. Um, but definitely for, for my interest is how this uh, automation, the legislation, the regulation come into play because you, know, you do not know the, you do, you, the unknown, you do not know the unknowns. Uh, and that's something that is all challenging the whole industry in terms of what are the gaps or what are the, the, um, you know, the, the, the so-called uh, issues that one will not be perceiving and how to actually fulfill that gap or eliminate or minimize the gaps. 
Dixon Lowe, thank you so much for your time. IDVS4 is coming up October 27 to 29 in Sydney. You can get your tickets on the website, idvs4.com.au. Yes, thank you.